uh, hello to students in CS1 and this video will be posted on YouTube so hello to YouTube this is Dr. Singhal professor of computer science at Camino College Torrance California so <clears throat> chapter 4 of my ebook talks about converting mathematical expressions into C++ source code that's the transition from doing mathematics to writing computer programs so in this video um, this is video 1 then I'm going to do video 2 I'm going to show you what steps are taken in converting <coughs> math expressions that we need to compute through computer program so let's get going <coughs> Okay, math formula need convergent C++ expressions if you want to do computations on those expressions. <coughs> Many math formula cannot be directly used in C++ programs. Here are the reasons. In general, computer programs do not do symbolic math. They compute value of some expression <coughs> and provide the results. And evaluated expression is final value is stored into a variable which is the right so side of the assignment expression <coughs> the symbols for multiplication used in math cannot be used in computer programs in math you use either dot or <coughs> dot if you are using abc or x or parenthesis alone none of them alone can be used for multiplication you need asterisk for multiplication and for computer do large and fractional powers or roots or sine or cosine or hyperbolic functions <clears throat> the use of functions from CMath library as part of computational expression is needed CMath is a library that has different <coughs> mathematical computations if you go to c++.com type cmath in the search box um, you will see that in fact we can show that to you right now this is c++.com if I just type cmath here <coughs> these are all the functions that you can use in your computer programming you can just click on each function <coughs> gives function detail but more importantly it gives you the application function so c++.com use that as much as you can <coughs> all right the effort you need to convert math to C++ expression is non-trivial. It's not trivial actually. In some cases it could be, but in some other cases it requires some effort. <coughs> One such effort is shown below. So imagine we have a math expression we are going to show you in a second. That needs to be converted to C++ expression. Let's say it's this expression here. So we are saying z equal to parenthesis because the whole thing inside gets power to 7, could be 7.2, could be anything. So <clears throat> that's one computation we have to do and then after doing that we take its 7th power. So inside if we have x that's easy, we can just do x is a variable that's going to have some value but then we have square root of 2y here so there's no math symbol this radical that we are seeing is not applicable in computer programs so radical has to be replaced by a cmath function which is called sqrt 
and we'll show demo of that to you <coughs> in this video and then we have plus radical of 3 that's cube root of t and then this whole thing power 7 so let's see how we're going to do this convert this side into c plus c expression so obviously it is clear to us the result of right side computation will be stored in variable z <clears throat> the way computer works is that it's going to compute this entire right hand side first whatever the computation result is value stored in z and computer will require value of obviously x y and t before it can store into z <coughs> and as i said user will provide value of x y and t and we will need function from cmath library to do this radical square root and then to do cube root and then sum these three up and do the power that would be some total of our computations so <coughs> function available in c plus plus though it, it appears that simple power function may work in all cases so what do I mean by that? Um, <clears throat> I can take power, POW power function, do power half, power 0.333, and then power 7. But doing that is not very elegant. We'd like to use as many relevant functions as we can to extend our knowledge of C++ library functions. Next slide gives us three C++ functions in CMath library that we can use. By the way, whole concept of functions, what they are, <coughs> how they are written, how they are used, meaning of making a function call, it's described in my ebook on chapter 4. Please read it. We will do a whole chapter on functions a bit later. <coughs> For now you have to depend on the reading in chapter 4 of my ebook. Okay, math function that will be used here. Each function returns a computer value that must be assigned to a variable as below. We'll have data type that's returned by the function. A variable on the left side of this assignment op operator. And this data type will be same data type that function call will return. So there has to be some homogeneity in that respect. Whatever type functions will return, this should be data type here. And then the function call is made. Meaning of function call, details are given in chapter 4 of ebook. Please read that. <clears throat> right side can also contain other variables and math operations between variables and function calls. So you'll see that pretty soon how that will be done. And once again please read single ebook chapter 4 to learn more about functions and their use. Okay for making that conversion that we were saying a minute ago so what I mean is that To compute this expression in terms of using computer, we need these functions. <clears throat> One of the functions we need, so this table we are going to give function name, purpose of the function number of arguments taken by the function these are the values that the user need to provide in order to make the function call what is the data type of input this input for the function to use that function can use and what is the data type of return value so that i showed a minute ago 
that z is on the right left side of the assignment expression what is the data type of that and example of the function call so take to take square root we use a function called sqrt in cmath library its purpose is to compute square value of the root sorry my speech has to improve it computes square root of this argument that is passed and number of argument taken is just one and it must be positive just like in math you cannot take a square root of a negative number a security function does not work with the negative argument <coughs> and this argument that you are passing its type could be integral or floating point type by no by now you know integral types and the floating point types the return value after computation will be floating point type and here's the example so sqrt will return a double type and there are other types you can pass and left hand side will be data type that sqrt returns and if i'm passing 5.5 which is double type it is going to turn a double type which will be square root of 5.5 Okay. Next function we are going to need is CBRT, which computes the square root, sorry, cube root. This also takes only one argument. Argument could be integral type or floating point type. Data type return is floating point type. And this is the example of use. If I want cube root of minus 27.1, then function call CBRT value pass 27.1 is on this side and computer will use this CBRT software take the cube root of 27.1 and store that into the root <coughs> and then to take powers x to the power y for example we use a function called POW this computes power and obviously this can have two arguments first argument is the base second the exponent so base to the power exponent is arranged in this way first argument is base second is the exponent and input could be either one integral or floating point type <coughs> return values floating point type example of call is double power val powered value for the pw 3.2 comma 2.1 this means 3.2 raised to the power 2.1 so we're going to use in that expression we just showed sqrt cbrt pw We'll show some simple use of these functions in our compiler export. So, <clears throat> I just don't want to depend only on showing you here. I want to use the compiler and show you how that works. Xcode and Visual Studio work very similar to each other. Okay. <clears throat> So things are slow when videos are made. So let me, um, okay, I'll keep this file, but let me fold this <coughs> and we're going to need C math. So let me just add that. String I don't need, but I'll just leave it as it is. Some compiler included automatically, but I will recommend that you include on your own, separate, so that your code becomes portable.
Okay, there are three functions we're going to use here. And so we're going to use SQRT, CBRT, and power. You can simulate some <coughs> sort of user input if you like. Maybe I should do that so that <coughs> you'll see this more as a program rather than just a toy. So I'll take a variable called double type and I'll just call it input. So I will tell user that see out, we'll see what it you want. Know, enter the data rules the square root and cube root is needed. Don't pay any attention to the yellow and red <coughs> status signs. Compiler is faster than I can type, but everything will be okay. C in input. Now we do use of SQRT and CBRT. So let's take the square root first. We'll say double <coughs> the root well one equal to now we call this QRT function and we pass that input to it so what's gonna happen here is that whatever user entered here meaning of typing that here is that it's being provided this SQRT software machine and SQRT will take this value compute the algorithm inside this software machine compute the square root of input which should be a positive number and return and store the value here now we could put print this here but let me just okay we can just print that out and we can be a little fancy about that we could say um, we can print the input first cascaded output is being used hat to the power 0 0.5 equals so it will be whatever they input it is power 0 0.5 to the square root came out to be root well 1 <coughs> and we'll use e and l for <coughs> okay obviously I didn't type it correctly so yeah my V is lowercase, that's not correct, so I'll fix that. So let's just run this program right now. Obviously, each time I run it, previous part, I'm going to type more, it's going to show up. So let's just run it. It's a little slow but it will work 
yeah it's very slow because anytime I make video it chews up so much memory that it slows down everything so we have to have patience so we'll take a number with square root well something with square root be around near whole number but not exactly whole number I'll take 64. One, two, one. So that should come out 8 something. <clears throat> yeah. So it shows 64.1 hat power 0.5 is 8.00625. So whatever I'm doing here, you could try that at home. I'm going to upload a copy of this program too. So you'll have this available. And I'm just going to remember 64.1, use that all through. Okay. So, so far so good. <clears throat> now try calling the CBRT function on input to get the cube root. So, Second variable root well two CBRT <coughs> input. Okay. <coughs> and I can print that too, root well two. So this time power is not 0.5 is something like this this will be a recurring decimal point to infinity notice we cannot write 1 divided by 3 1 divided by 3 is 0 in C++ so I'm just going to live with that <coughs> So let's try that with input of 64.1. See what we get. Yeah, and that makes makes sense. The square root of 64.1 will be 8.00625. Cube root of 64.1 will be 4.00. Okay, <clears throat> so CBRT works just the way a square root works. Software inside this function uses this value to compute the square root, uh, sorry, cube root and stores the value. <clears throat> Finally, we're going to do the power and in power what we're going to do is you can actually take this value and power it back to 3 <coughs> <coughs> So we should get the input back Okay So we'll say double <coughs> Power well equal to u w so notice what I'm doing here I'm taking the root well 2 <coughs> just type it root and I'm raising to power 3.0. You can do 3, 3. <laughs> It'll make more sense. <clears throat> so, here we took cube root of input. I'm taking that cube root, raising it to 3, so I could, should get that value back. Okay? So now, we'll output it. <clears throat> ok 
Okay, so in order to do the power, I have to do one more thing here. Show that. <clears throat> How to show the parentheses. And now the hat. Three equals <coughs> PWR well any program I'm doing you're not fully going to own it or understand it until you type line by line the way I'm doing here run it each time in fact do exactly what I'm doing then you own it if you just see this video running, uh, you have some familiarity, but you don't own it actually. So do everything that I'm showing you in this video. <clears throat> then you'll own it. Otherwise, it's just a little bit of familiarity, but you don't understand it truly. <clears throat> okay, so let's just do that again for 64.1. So same thing is going to ha happen, we are going to get a square root 8.0 something, cube root 4 point something and then we are going to get 64.1 back because we are doing cube roots to the power 3. So cube root is eliminated, you get the original value back. <coughs> so square root 64.1 to the power 0 0.5 is 8.00625, 64.1 to the power point 3333 3, 3, 3, recurring fraction 4.028 and if you take that raise it to the power 3 you get exactly what we entered 64.1 and that shows you use of three functions that we are using in that formula we are converting how they are used okay and this listing will be uploaded but actually if you want to do it just pause the video right here and you can run this program right now if you like but here's the output <coughs> and everything that i'm showing here will be uploaded this this thing will be uploaded. okay let's go back to our problem <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so in that expression we showed before obviously by now you possibly forgot it so I'm going to show it to you right now again this expression we're going to convert it has three terms x square root of 2y cube root of t <clears throat> that would be one operand, one argument to POW function and 7 would be the exponent. So that's what we were showing in that slide here. So converting step will be we convert term x so x has the same form in c plus plus x the square root of 2y first we look inside 2y needs a operator asterisk inside because otherwise two if we put 2y itself that's an illegal variable name so first we put parenthesis we put 2 asterisk y <coughs> multiplication is not done without asterisk as a multiplication operator this is the hardest concept in fact people who are very good in math excellent in math they are totally frustrated by this fact that in writing computer program you cannot use 2y computer doesn't understand what 2y is 
you need to put an asterisk for multiplication operator asterisk which is a multiplication operator in between and then pass that to SQRT function <clears throat> okay cube root is very sm simple CBRT T but if we add T into P or something then we'll have to put the asterisk between those two <clears throat> so let me say one more time most frustrating thing novice excellent mathematicians who want to be programmer have is they do not understand that why a computer doesn't understand to why it doesn't because it needs an operator to obey in between two operands two is an operand y is an operand it needs an operator in between it's really as simple as that there's nothing more to it okay so this converts into that I should have <clears throat> okay so now we can take this instead of this take this instead of that take this instead of that put plus 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 and then we take the power seven so overall expression becomes this z equal to pow x plus sqrt of 2y plus cbrt of t this was one argument raised to the power 7 is the power or exponent <coughs> and some people will have trouble here too they say okay all of a sudden what happened here well it's very simple <coughs> power function first argument is the base second argument the exponent so by adding these together plus 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 I get the base and the exponent 7 look at it carefully for a few minutes then you will get it okay but that's just about it basically you sum the three terms in the right of a bow table and make it as the first argument of the POW function and then use 7 as the second argument which is the power to this being raised okay so that's one case <coughs> your pre-lab work for lab 2 will have number of such expressions where you'll have to convert from math to C++ form and you get chance to practice practice that at that time okay this is the end of part one of this video soon we'll be back with the part two <coughs> okay thank you